All right, everyone. That's me, all finished with my jack-o'-lanterns. I've got them lined up here. I did one for each period of ceramics that I have this year. Um, so I've got the three of them. And from the video from the other day, um, I went ahead and I finished cutting out the designs of the faces after cutting the lids. And then I went through and just spent a lot of time cleaning out the cuts. Um, I took time to sponge, and as I sponge, I sponge away from the edges of the cuts um, so the scraggly bits don't go down inside. I also spent a lot of time taking um, the tips of a needle tool or a pencil and burnishing inside my cuts to really clean them up. And then I also sponge from the inside on the back of the cuts um, to clean them up so that I don't have any of those little hanging um, rough areas or scraggly bits. Um, just trying to make them look as clean as I possibly can. I also found that um, I had this little foam paintbrush um, from the hardware store. And they're about $1.50 a piece. And they work great for getting inside the cuts um, where I couldn't get my regular sponge. Um, so got them all cleaned up. I'll try and hold one a little closer here for you so you can examine it. Um, but yeah, I really spent a lot of time just I'm cleaning out those cuts, taking the needle tool, the tip of a pencil, and basically just rubbing and burnishing inside those cuts to really get rid of the little scraggly bits and to clean them up. And then afterwards, I took the little foam paintbrush and I just sponged along the best I could um, and tried to clean everything out from all the cuts. Um, then once again, sponged the outside and just tried to make it look as clean and neat as I could. Um, I also sponged under the lid, um, so it was really nice and clean. And then I really spent a lot of time going inside, trying to clean out the inside so that you didn't see um, any harsh things from the back of the cuts, because um, those will shine through when you put a candle inside and you're looking at the design. I tried to really get uh, smooth out and clean where the seam was, and just really tried to make it the best that I possibly could. Um, so hopefully you guys will do the same and put that kind of effort into your work and then go ahead and leave the lid on it. And at this point, we want them to just dry out slowly. Um, I will keep a bag over the top of mine, but I'll keep it puffed out uh, so that it has air in it and I'll let them dry slow. Um, when the, thing, the projects dry slow, it seems like there's less stress on the clay because when it dries, it's going to shrink and our air has been very dry lately, so they will dry up quickly. If they dry quickly and they shrink quickly, sometimes it causes the clay to stress and you'll get little hairline cracks, especially if you have thin areas. Um, so if we can let them dry nice and naturally and slowly, um, there's less chance of that happening. So um, I'll just set mine aside on the shelf and I will go ahead and let them dry up slowly and I will save mine so that when we are back in person for um, school and we have enough projects to load the kiln, then I'll add mine in with uh, all the student work and we'll go ahead and get those fired up. So if you decide that you want to keep yours, um, what you can do is with a pencil tip or a tip of a knife or a needle, you can go ahead and carefully tilt it over, keep your hand on the lid or take the lid off, and etch your first initial and last name on the bottom along with your period um, and then you can go ahead and just set that aside and let it hang out and start to dry. Keep it somewhere safe where it's not going to get bumped or tipped or knocked over because um, when the clay dries and it's bone dry, it will be like a piece of chalk. It will snap very easily. So you have to take care in how you handle it and uh, make sure that it's not um, getting bumped or knocked over in any way. If you decide that you don't want to hold on to yours to bring back for in-person firing, then what you can do is take a knife and cut it up in small bits. Um, or if you want to take out your frustration, you can smash it all you want. Um, or you can just drop it in your um, bag with, with your clay, spray a bunch of water on it, and check it and do that for probably two or three days in a row to make sure it's getting enough moisture. And the clay will eventually soak in that water and it'll become nice and soft. And then all you have to do is cut it off with another piece of clay, wedge it, and it's good to go again. Um, so that's it for the pumpkin assignment. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It's usually one of the favorites of the students. So um, make sure you're taking those good quality pictures and then submitting them in Canvas for your grade. Um, and then I will see you on the next one.